He was a pioneer. He was an inventor. He was a man that helped put the world on wheels. His name was Henry Ford. And even if you don't like his products from his company now, you have to remember for what his company did for the world and the rest of us as Henry Ford put the world on wheels. Yes, today at Auto Lux, we're going to be taking a look back at how Henry Ford and his Ford Motor Company helped start and put the world on wheels. And what else he pioneered and gave us at the beginning of his career. AutoLux.net Autopod, streaming day or night, coming right at you, right here, right now. Welcome back to AutoLux Podcast. I am your host, the doctor to the automotive industry, Mr. Everett J. himself. And today we are taking a look at Henry Ford and the beginning of his influence on the automotive culture. Henry Ford tinkered. He essentially just tinkered away in a garage, utilizing somebody else's product. You gotta remember, Henry Ford didn't invent the car. No matter who tells you that, he didn't invent the car. The car is a German product, and essentially, the first vehicle that you can even claim to be in a motorized carriage was developed in France. But the first internal combustion engine as we know it today, with a piston and a flywheel, was Gerald Benz Motorwagen. Yes, from 1885. I remember Ford didn't appear until 1903. But with that, Ford saw a need for people. He didn't like that only the rich people can have vehicles. Who would? It's like right now we're looking at Virgin Galactic and SpaceX. They're looking at allowing commercialization of the space industry. Putting people into space. Now people like myself, who don't have loads and loads of money just laying around, I can't afford to go to space. But eventually, a visionary, similar to Henry Ford, will say, screw that, I'm gonna let everybody do it, and find a way to capitalize on on that industry and Henry Ford did that this episode is about how he capitalized on that what did Henry Ford do that was different than the competition well the one thing he did do is he did bring a moving assembly line now moving assembly lines had already existed but not to the extent that Henry Ford did it it was similar to what the McDonald's brothers did with their original McDonald's restaurant and how they revolutionized fast food you create stations and people solely work on that station. So Henry Ford saw moving assembly line. He saw how it worked. People work in a shop. And if you get people to work in just one area, on one specific thing over and over and over and over again, they eventually get quicker and faster at it. I've worked on moving assembly lines and I've worked, let's say I've worked at a transport plant for Dana and I've worked at a General Motors truck frame factory owned by Formit Industries, a division of Magna International. What did I learn while working in those assembly lines? Something that Henry Ford saw. He was able to see essentially into the future and see how people could quickly put things together if that's all they did. Now when you take a look at a manufacturer facility for something like Rolls Royce or even Bugatti, like they slowly build the products. Yes, it's more meticulous and there's less chance for error than on a moving assembly line. But Henry Ford wanted to put the world on wheels. He didn't just want to start another car company. He wanted to start the car company. He wanted to be the man that would be credited for putting the world on wheels. And that's what he did. He brought the moving assembly line to the industry. He essentially introduced mass production to the automotive industry. By bringing mass production to the automobile industry, he brought the price down substantially. He made it so that the guys building the cars can afford to purchase the vehicles. Whereas over in Germany, Mercedes was building products that the people constructing couldn't even afford. When I ask you out there, how many people working at a Bugatti factory or Koeing said can afford to purchase just the vehicles they are building every single day. Hardly any of them. They may be able to say they could sit in them, but they could never own them. Henry Ford wanted to make you own that product. But when he did that, he was smart about it. He brought cars to the masses in North America. He built his product and named it the Model T because that's how long it took him through the alphabet to finally get it right. He needed an internal combustion engine vehicle that could be easy to start up, easy to operate, and easy to fix. So by the time he got to T, he finally got it right. Right, the Model T. And when he first started mass producing vehicles, they came in one body style and one color. Making a coupe version, a truck version, or making it red. That was all on you. As Henry Ford said, I'll sell you any vehicle, any color of the rainbow that you want, as long as it's black. Black was the cheapest paint he could get to drive down the costs. And pioneering cheap startup. Something that we saw Hyundai do in the 80s. Hyundai, when I was a kid, had the Pony and Excel. Cheap, crappy vehicles that could easily 
easily be bought by anyone. They came to North America. They set up dealerships with all the financial backing that they had acquired. They shipped over cheaply built vehicles in mass quantities, a low amount of features, a low amount of colors, which drove the price down. In today's dollars, those cars would cost under $10,000. Something that a lot of people can afford. Something that some people even on minimum wage working up to 40 hours a week can afford to purchase. A brand new vehicle. Ford knew that. Hyundai took that and with all the profits they made from mask selling with low amount of features and colors, kept the cost low. Which means their profits were decent. They took those extra profits and instead of pocketing it, they reinvested it back into their manufacturing process to get better quality. From the better quality, they started building more products. And for more products, they were able to move further and further up the evolutionary automotive food chain and today we have the hundred thousand dollar hyundai products from the genesis brand taking a step back essentially what ford did ford helped them do that yes henry ford did because then he started out with the model t and people were able to buy it word got out and when word got out it wasn't just north america that wanted his cars the rest of the world wanted his cars and soon enough he was moving into europe africa asia australia south america even my home country canada Canada. He was going everywhere he could, and he was still standing by his rule of similar product, one color. Sure, there were garages and tons of people that could color it and do whatever else they want to it afterwards. But from this, his profit soared. Tons of people were buying. The world was going crazy. You gotta remember, before Henry Ford, my home country, Canada, there was only a few thousand cars. For a population of under 7 million people, there was only a few thousand cars. Mostly owned by the most wealthy people in the country. When Henry Ford started moving in and by the roaring 20s, those were moving into the hundreds of thousands of cars. And you gotta remember, by the time I was born in the 80s, the average family had 2.1 cars. That doubled the amount of market share. And for a population in Canada, at that time, about 24 million people, over half of that population owned vehicles. Massive market. Gotta remember, when he got into this, sort of mass producing vehicles with limited features, easy to fix, and limited colors. He he got tons of people into it. You gotta remember, they were cheap to operate. He built all of his parts, everything, under one roof. Whereas today, they farm it out to companies like Dana and Magna. Back in those days, Henry Ford built everything in-house. He didn't farm anything out. Everything was built under one roof so he can watch all the operations. So the steel came in. It got formed in the blacksmith shop. It got sent over where the frame went down one line and the body went down another line. And then the engine was down a different line. If you watch old production videos of the Henry Ford Museum, you'll see wooden spokes woodworking shop making spokes one guy just turning out spoke after spoke after spoke and then the other guy turning out the central wheel husing one after another after another and eventually all those parts individual parts being made by people move further down the line and get assembled all together now you have an entire wheel assembly complete with tire they can be added onto the vehicle but by that time the frame has been fully put together the engine block is being dropped down the wheels can be put on and like I said the entire housing was dropped on the vehicle you gotta remember back in those days they were body on frame vehicles so they built the body in the coachworks. That was the longest running area because you had to make seats, you had to put steering housing in, you had to put cages, you had the roof, you had the windshield, you had the doors, like the tons and tons and tons of things. But each one was handled by individuals working in select stations all around this plant to bring everything together. But by the end of the line, these cars would be churned. And in less than 24 hours, a new Model T was rolling off the assembly line. And his employees that built these vehicles were able to afford them. So he wasn't just churning out tons tons of vehicles. You also have to remember the Model T was the first automotive product in the world to ever surpass the 1 million produced mark. From that, his mass production lines were copied by competitors. William C. Durant taking over operations to Chevrolet. Using his banking knowledge, he took over Chevrolet, acquired Buick, went after Cadillac, and by the time he had merged everything together with General Motors Corporation, he managed to acquire Oldsmobile as well. But he was able to expand exponentially because of the help from Mr. Henry Ford himself in his mass-produced production line. Yes, Henry Ford didn't invent the wheel. It was invented a long time ago. He didn't invent the car. It was invented a long time ago. He revolutionized the industry that produced automobiles. Essentially, he wasn't an automotive genius. He was a mass production genius. And from the products he created and the mass production system that he had developed and built, the world started moving. Production lines that before were similar built with mass production started to see how he ran his things and built on to it. Today, robots do a lot of the automotive production. People are still part of it, but nobody's in the welding
building shops anymore. And there's not that many people in a paint booth. Most of that done by Ford is all done by robotics. The world has changed since Henry Ford. But like we said, he didn't revolutionize the car. Anybody else was able to build a motorized carriage in their shed. There was tons of companies before him. Gotta remember, Oldsmobile is older than Ford. They no longer exist, but they were older than Ford. They built cars before him, but they didn't mass produce them. Ford put the world on wheels so that today we can all enjoy moving around in automobiles. That may be a downfall to pollution around the globe, but without that revolutionary thinking that Henry Ford had, products such as your iPhone in your hand may not be here today. Because you have to remember, Apple didn't make cell phones. They just revolutionized the industry. They took the cell phone and a Blackberry and added a touchscreen. And they became the first company to be valued at over $1 trillion. All from revolutionizing the industry they got into. Similar to what Henry Ford did. He revolutionized an industry that he got into. And from that, he put the world on wheels. And he showed us, you don't have to think of a brand new invention. You just have to think of a better way to produce it. So, in the end, really, Henry Ford didn't invent the automobile. He didn't even really invent the moving assembly line. He acquired knowledge of its existence and saw how it worked. He just revolutionized its ability in the automobile of industry and showed people how you can move things down a product line from station to station more efficiently if people did them individually. When you make your worker proud of the work he does, they will work quicker, better, and more efficient for you, thus churning out more products and more profit. We thank you for that, Mr. Henry Ford. We are glad that you put the world on wheels. We're also glad that if you buy any vehicle in any color you want, as long as it's black, there's a mentality behind his original concept to keep his costs down. So from all of us at Autolux, if you liked what you hear, jump over to Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn and like, share, or comment about this podcast. If you're looking for other avenues to listen or view this podcast, feel free to check out Podbeam, Spotify, Amazon, iTunes, Google, or even over on YouTube. And just remember, our main host site, www.autolux.net, for all your corporate links websites from around the globe, big or small, we got them all. And stay tuned in early January for our end of the year reviews about every corporate car from around the world and its design rating. Shooting for that coveted Autolux A Plus Award of Design Excellence. And while there, see how some of the cars that you're looking at compare to each other and where they stand on the design scale. So for myself and Autolux, strap yourself in for this one fun wild ride that Henry Ford gave us.